Hey everyone, so many of you probably wondered, you know, what can you fish for in the summertime? Once the weather starts warming up, the trout fishing generally slows down after spring, and the salmon fishing doesn't really start until the fall months. Well, there are several options, and one of them that's fairly underrated, um, it's carp fishing. Um, carp is actually an invasive species in British Columbia, um, but you can find them in several different lakes and sloughs throughout um, this province. Uh, here we are at Elk Lake on Vancouver Island. Uh, this is one of the lakes that have carp in it. In the lower mainland, um, you can find them in Burnaby Lake, Deer Lake, and some of the sloughs such as Sturgeon Slough and Sumas uh, Canal as well. Uh, so how do you fish for them? Well, first of all, you need to know their behavior. Carp is a omnivorous bottom feeder. Um, so what they do is they come into the shallow water and they'll feed right on the bottom, graze along the bottom, sucking in gravel and sand, and picking up food and spitting them out um, as they go along. So the best way to catch them is to keep your bait on the bottom. Uh, so it, this, the setup is fairly simple. Um, basically you need a spinning setup. Most of the fish are going to be between anywhere from 2 pounds up to 10 pounds. So a light um, to medium spinning setup is uh, pretty good. Um, the thing to look for is you, you want to have a fairly soft uh, tip, rod tip, so you can see the bites because carp are pretty sensitive biters and uh, you want to have a pretty soft tip to see the bites. So for the terminal setup it's pretty simple. Like I said earlier, carp is a bottom feeder so you got to keep your bait on the bottom. So what I have on the main line is a sliding weight um, to keep your setup at the same spot. Um, sliding weight comes down to a swivel but you got to have a little bead between the swivel and the weight to make sure they don't have contact each other so the knot doesn't get damaged. Um, from the swivel, you got to have your leader down to the hook. So this leader right here can't be too long. When you're fishing for trout or salmon or steelhead, um, you tend to use the longer leader because you want to keep your bait off the bottom. But this bait, since we want to keep it on the bottom, um, this leader right here is probably only about 8 to 10 inches long. The shorter the better. It doesn't have to be very long. Um, this is 10 pound fluorocarbon, seagull fluorocarbon. Um, you want something that's fairly thin but fairly strong as well. Uh, the size of the hook is number. This is size four on the hook. You can go down to size six or eight if you want. It's all personal preference. And for bait, what we're using, we can because they they eat vegetation. You can use corn. You can use um, dough bait. So I made up a whole bunch of little dough balls like that. And this one has curry powder in it, so it's scented. You want something that's fairly smelly so you can attract the fish to your bait, to the area. So the way, the way to fish for these guys, so with the spinning setup, what you're doing is you're casting it out, leaving your bait out in the middle of nowhere and hoping the fish will come to you. Unlike trout fishing or salmon fishing or steelhead fishing, where you're sight fishing for trout or you're fishing for, you're trying different spots to find, find salmon and steelhead and trout, um, for these guys, you're basically just waiting. It's a waiting game. You're waiting for the fish to come to you because these guys were feeding, they're constantly swimming around, grazing along the bottom, and uh, it's just a really patient waiting game um, until the fish come to your bait and pick it up. So while you're waiting for the fish to bite, it's really important to have your fishing rod really still while carp fishing. Um, therefore, you've got to have a really good rod holder. So right behind me, the rod's sitting on the rod stand. It's sitting very still. And the reason for that is that carp are very light biters. Um, the jaw protrude, and uh, while well, they suck the bait in and out, they tend to suck it in, spit it out again, and they keep repeating the process until they get hooked. So it's very important to keep your rod really still watch the light bites on the rod tip until um, they really commit to it. It's like a mini version of sturgeon where um, the bites start about very small before you really, um, can really feel quite a bit of weight onto the line. So while these fish are pretty light biters and seem pretty docile, these fish are actually incredible fighters. Once hooked, um, they can run for quite a long time and they can fight pretty hard. So once you bring the fish closer in, it's pretty important to have a really nice big net so you can keep the fish in it um, because they can be pretty hard to handle. Um, it's really important to have a net if you want to release the fish. Um, keep the net in there and hook it and uh, it's easy to handle the fish that way. So there you have it. Carp fishing can be a very fun family activity between the month of May and October. So come on down, enjoy the sun and do some carp fishing 
And remember, this is an invasive species, so if you catch a carp in one watershed, make sure you don't move to another one. If you want to release it, just release it quickly back in the same lake or slough where you caught it from. And uh, if you have any other questions about carp fishing or any other fishing techniques, uh, be sure to leave a comment or message us and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And until next time, good luck fishing. Yeah, hold up.